want you to also note that they were willing to teach others as well. Well, I, I don't know that they specifically, it doesn't say they were holding a little school there and <laughs> say this is how you build the wall. But it does say by their example, they were an example of teaching to others. And what does it say about leaders in the New Testament? Ephesians 4, 11 through 12 says, and he gave some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers. For what purpose? For the equipping of the saints for the work of service, to the building up of the body of Christ. Your leaders are given to you here in this church so that they can help you be trained and prepared and equipped to do what God has called you to do. And if we're doing our jobs as leaders, those of us who are called as leaders, if we're doing our job as leaders, then you're prepared to do your job. And what I need to be doing is training somebody to replace me. How many, can I get an amen on that? Amen. No. <laughs> oh, there we go. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> and you need to be training somebody to replace you. Right? Not that you're going to quit. No, I'm not quitting, by the way. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, good. Thank you. <laughs> Kenny, I'll say nice things about you later. <laughs> but so that the work of God can expand. Because what happens when you have more musicians? You have more opportunity to glorify God through music, don't you? What happens when you have more teachers? You have more classes that can teach people about Jesus. What happens when you have more children's workers? You can take care of the many children we already have, <laughs> which is what we need right now. There are more children's workers along the way. God is blessing his church, and you're a part of that blessing. Your presence here, also what God has called you to do in a church, however you may think it's small, is great in the sight of God. It's your portion of the wall. It's your building. Each person does their part. The leader set the example, but each person does their part. Uh, look at the phrases as we go through this chapter. Over and over it's, again, it says that they built uh, next to him or next to them beside him or beyond them and after him. 28 times in 32 verses, it refers to building alongside of somebody else. That's what God has called us to do. Each of us do our part alongside somebody else. Every person is important, as we read a minute ago in that, in that passage. Every person is important. Every piece of the watch is important to the total functioning of the watch. Uh, as, a strip, as a Chinese proverb says, many hands make light work. Every one of us is important. And as we share the burden together, the burden is lighter. I want you to note with me that distance was not a factor in this. Uh, these folks came from all around Jerusalem. There's a map I want to share with you. Uh, share with you. I think it's right before here. So here we go in Jerusalem. This is where the temple was being built. But if you look up there, how far away is Mizpah? Bethlehem is six miles from Jerusalem. Mizpah is many miles from Jerusalem, right? It's a long way, but people from Mizpah built. People from Jericho, which is not even, there it is on the map. People from Jericho built a, a portion of the wall. People from a far distance made a difference in building this wall and accomplishing God's purpose for the people of God. People from a far distance. You know, you can make a difference. You can make a difference here. You can make a difference in far distant areas. What did we talk about this morning with Operation Christmas Child? That's a way you can make a difference around the world. A gift for a boy or a girl. A way you can make a difference locally? A Thanksgiving basket for somebody else. You can contribute money if you mark it on your card. For the Northeast Relief, 100% of every dollar that you give will go directly to relief because our missionaries are already there. If you market disaster relief, our disaster relief teams, because they're all volunteers, because they're using their own time, they will invest 100% of that dollar that you give to disaster relief in feeding people in the Northwest or providing other things for them, mucking them out. Uh, helping their houses return to normal. 
that will go 100% to that. There's a way that distance doesn't have to affect our ministry for the Lord, no matter how far away we are. We, our church represents people from at least Newcastle with Parachute uh, and Rio Blanco, <laughs> up that direction. We represent people from a long, uh, a big area here in this, this church. We work together for the glory of God. Amen? No matter how far away physically we live from the church. I want you to note also economics was not a divider. If you look through these passages of scriptures, you'll see all kinds of leaders mentioned. The priests, the district officials, even Nehemiah himself uh, sent as representative of the Babylonian government. They all participated together in the, the building of the wall. Over and over again, you notice this noble or this, this outstanding uh, leader or politician was involved in it. But not only the politicians, also the common people. Look there in verse 5. It says, the, Moreover, then the Tekanites made repair, but their nobles did not support the work of their masters. The nobles said, No, we're not going to be involved in it. But the regular folks, maybe like most of us, right? The regular folks said, let's go and build. Let's go and build. So there wasn't any division between the people. You might be working next to a very well-known politician. And it didn't matter. You were both putting stones on the wall. There's no distinction in the church between any, even gender. Look down in verse 12. In verse 12, it says, Shalom, the son of Halawish, the official of half the district of Jerusalem made repairs, he and his daughters. There's no difference. There's no difference. I thank God for all the, the ladies who work hard in the church. You see how many youth we had up here playing today in the band? Isn't that cool? A lot of those were young ladies up here working for the Lord, doing what God had, using the gifts that God had given them for the Lord. Praise God for every one of them. There's no distinction at the cross between who you are in any way. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. Or as the scripture says, there is neither Jew nor Greek, nor slave nor free, nor male nor female. But we are all one in Christ Jesus. We are all one. That's the folks back here in this passage. They represented that kind of unity. A unity without distinction between different folks. I know some folks stand up in front of the congregation. Anytime you want to do that, let me know. <laughs> uh, some folks are behind the scenes. I, we talked about the, the fifth quarter. You know the reason the fifth quarter was such a success? Miss Susie McCutcheon. Behind the scenes. Not knowing I was going to say something about her today. <laughs> worked faithfully, had everything organized. It was a pleasure to be involved in. She would never want to come up <laughs> in front of you and say anything. But God is using her mightily. And there's all kinds of folks like that in the church. The people watching our nursery right now are folks just like that too. They're not doing it for their own glory. They don't get it. They're doing it because they love children and they love families and allowing moms and dads to be in here and worship because they're serving the Lord. It takes all kinds of folks. Some of them are, some positions in the church are more visible, others are not, just like the watch. But every part is important to the good working of God's church. You're important to what God is doing right here in this church. And, and you're going to know more about how you can be even more involved. There was nothing that stood in the way of what God wanted them to do. But I want you to also to not, note, not only does each person do, do their part, but also each part is important to the whole. Uh, Henry Ostry bought a piece of land with a barn near a creek in Bruno, Nebraska. You may have seen this. It, it hit the national news. Uh, not that he bought the property, but he brought the property on this creek. And every year, the floor was muddy. One year, they had a great flood. The flood filled the barn up to 29 inches high. It was just unusable. And so he wanted to move the barn. He wanted to get it moved. 
Well, it happened that the town of Bruno was having their centennial celebration. And so he had a great idea. His son figured out the weight of the barn. The barn was 19,500 pounds, is what he figured. Just by taking each board and figuring out the weight of a board and adding everything together and the beams and all, he figured it was about that heavy, and which meant that it, it was a, about nine and a half tons. That's a heavy barn, right? Nine and a half tons. But he figured that, that if they were to build a metal uh, framework under the barn, under the walls of the barn, to where 155 people could grab hold of a bar and lift, that 155 people could move a nine and a half ton barn up the hill. And so part of the centennial celebration of Bruno was this barn moving. They built this metal framework, and each person, if they lifted their portion of the barn, was lifting only 55 pounds. Only 55 pounds. And they carried that barn on live TV. They carried that barn 20, 50 yards to the south, six feet higher than it was away from the tree. These 155 people did what n none of them could have done by themselves. 155 people did what 100 of them couldn't have done by themselves. By working together, they physically moved a very heavy barn. Folks, do you know on many Sundays here at the church, we have about that many people here between the two services? Do you realize what we could do spiritually in our community if we each did our part? If we each lifted our load? I'm not talking about you doing what Brian's supposed to do. I'm not talking about you doing what Jeff's supposed to do. I'm not talking about you doing what Justin's supposed to do. I'm talking about you doing what you're supposed to do. If we all lifted our weight, just think, how God could move this community for the Lord Jesus Christ. If we all lifted our weight. You may think, well, my part's a pretty small part. No, your part is your weight. It's the part God has designed for you, and it's just as heavy and it's just as important as my part in the life of this church. Amen? And if we're going to move this community for Christ, we each need to do our part. But there's some things I think we can learn from this passage that will help us as to do our part. Oftentimes, the reason we think something is impossible, and we may think this is impossible, that we actually reach this community for Christ. Doesn't that seem so big? How could it possibly be done? Between our church and the other churches that love Jesus Christ in this community, God has put together a, a, a team that if everybody does their part, his purpose can be accomplished. Amen? And we can make a tremendous difference in this community. Where we are limited is when we think of what we can do. No, I can't reach this community for Christ. But I and you 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 understand what I mean? Together we can do it. Together we can make a difference. Together we can move this community for Christ. But we have to be some these things. Number one, willing to learn. Now, if you look there in verses 8 and 9, you're going to find mention of Uzael, the goldsmith of Hanan 